Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Motorcycle Rewind. And today we're back with the Ran when parked Honda CB360. And this pile of parts. All right, not this side cover. But this pile of parts. So we're going to put those guys on here. We're getting closer to getting this guy finished. So let me get you guys set up and we're going to get started putting stuff on. So we're going to start off pulling off this broken triple tree clamp. We just put it on there, left it on there just to mock it up so that we could just start to see what it looks like. Guys, if you have these, there's a little washer that goes on there that goes on there and it'll stop you from breaking these. So do yourself a favor and put the washer on. This stuff was just hand tight again, just to mock it up. I'm only taking this off because I got to pull off those clip-ons and I put those clip-ons, we were never keeping them. We we're never going to use them, but I put them on because it made it easier to roll it around because I had something I could use to roll it around. So those clip-ons are going to be replaced with a set of Clubman bars. Let me finish pulling this guy off. When I put it together, I was trying to make sure we had all the pieces and parts. If you're familiar with this build, we got it, it was all disassembled. So we had to make sure we had everything here. And with this, I need a Phillips screwdriver, uh, a JIS, again, JIS screwdriver. So I can pull this off. There's a nut back there that I'm gonna have to pull off our bolt to get off so I can get the, the headlight bracket which attaches to the bottom of the, the triple tree clamp so I can get that off. Oh. There it is. Headlight will come out. Let's leave it right there so I can pull this guy off. And now I can pull off that triple tree. There we go. See, so there's normally, when you look here, I'll show you real quick, because this happens all the time. So it's a, a through bolt that goes through Normally on these triple tree, this triple tree clamp, there's a, a D washer that goes right in between there. And without it, when you put it together, you will over tighten it and you'll snap it right there. Happens all the time. See on this one, they happened to do it on the first one and then tighten it again, did it on the second one. So make sure you have that D ring. Now, if you don't have that, if you don't have that D washer, you can take a washer the reason why it has to be a D because it's, it won't fit a normal washer won't fit what you can do is take a normal washer and then just grind it down on one side so that it'll fit up against here okay guys here we are with the the clubman bars that uh, we're going to be using right so you see them here a couple of things i am going to do is these are the controls but you'll notice when I put, well, we'll show you on this one. This side has the little divot to be able to let it ride right next to the, the handlebar. And this one doesn't. This one's made to ride uh, so the wires can go inside. So what we're just going to do, I've already marked the spots. We're going to drill some holes and we're just going to run the wires inside. So with the bars being like this, I'm going to have these wires run inside and then exit right here from the bottom. Exit right from the bottom and then go out. It'll just clean up the look a little bit better. So we're going to get to drilling some holes and uh, see how it goes. Finally got the controls in. We've got them mounted to the handlebars. I've, I've got to change the, the throttle tube the grip on the throttle tube connect the wiring because we were waiting on the on the controls before we could hook up, hook up the wiring go through all the wiring and then we'll get to we've got a mock-up or not finished hooking up the exhaust that we have down here we'll just have to drill a hole we'll have to drill a hole to be able to mount it up with these little shorty tubes we'll do that and then once we get all that done put the carburetor on then we'll get to sorting out the seat in rear fender. Yeah, that, 
feels better just putting these guys on because just getting us one step closer this is a big step I've been waiting to put these handlebars on for a while get rid of those silly clip-ons that were on there definitely looks good because we ran the wires inside the the handlebars so it's nice and neat so they'll be able to tuck right in here okay so let's go ahead and get these these gauges on right in there get this guy where it goes again they just mount up right there and this is going to just having those wires run already it just cleans up that whole front end just makes it look so much better and then now i'm going to lift these guys up there we go that should be enough to clear okay guys so we're back with back here you see we have the frame all cleaned up just like we did our task today is to get the modify the frame the rest of the way to get the seat to fit we're going to cut off this bit here and here as you can see right here and here where i have the little lines so that my seat tab here will just slide right underneath there we'll slide right underneath there and it'll pull it in nice and tight when we get that so that's the first thing and then the great thing is that we're leaving the bolt i mean the the captured nut right here for the uh, battery box so that once we bolt all the battery box back down this is going to even though it's thin it's going to be really strong because it's going to connect all the way to here and here and we really need to just get underneath this lip just to hold the front of the seat down so i'm going to get you guys set up and then we're going to go ahead and start cutting stuff off so you can see i finished here I uh, drilled a couple of holes after I trimmed it down, dribbled, drilled a couple of holes, actually four on top, and then one down here, and then plug welded it, and then grinded it down. Touched up a little spots that I had I needed to back here on the hoop. But let's put the tank on, and then we can test fit the, the seat, and I think it's gonna work pretty good. So that'll go there. And then with this tab, this tab here, this guy just goes right underneath, just like it should and gets right up close to the tank. So I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about the big gap right there. And the other good thing is that when you look back, if I get you here, when you look at it, the seat is gonna sit nice and tight, nice and snug to it. And then I just have to put a strap back here. Gotta put a strap back here so where I mount the, uh, where this this screws in i've got a couple of screws right here i just i've already marked it i've got a couple of screws here i'm gonna put a plate across drill some holes so that when this guy goes in i'll be able to snug snug it down pretty tight and it'll fit really good okay guys here we are we're back i got a little crazy and welded this back piece on drilled a couple of holes uh, these two are to mount the seat these two are to mount the fender and I made this little tab to go right there still have to go through and um, paint it all up but let me show you kind of how it works and then I modified the the splash guard inner fender the inner fender right there so that it would fit had to shorten it so it fits right up underneath there but that makes a difference this is going to be ridden so it's going to be one that's going to be used so we want to make sure that we uh we made it functional so that's why he wanted a, a rear fender so let me just show you what this looks like i was able to use the the factory bolt locations uh normally holds the taillight so that was good i was able to do that which that helps it's a little short fender Let's see if i can get this guy under here but it bolts on pretty good and we'll put this tab just in case somebody grabs it just gives it a third point of uh in case somebody grabs it to lift the bike up or anything like that i'm not tightening these down these are well maybe i will if i put the washers in so I, i'm gonna have to take it apart to paint it uh, to paint the frame up again so let me do that, put the washer in so it sits in good. And come here. 
this guy in and so that's the fender on again this is a a um, cb360 fender that we just we uh, shortened it a bit so it would fit and then the seat we've got this tab that came with the seat we narrowed this down a bit i'll show you i showed you earlier we narrowed this down a bit welded it back up so it fits once i put the battery box in the battery box will connect here here and here so this little tab right here is going to be really strong so then this guy comes in under here and then i've got two little bolts that just have to go on you just have to fish them in underneath and it just bolts on i'm not gonna bolt it on i'll show you i'll get to it but that's it just like that we've got a neat little let me stand you up a little bit we've got a neat little just short little fender back there that'll stop water from flying on it we got the inner fender that cleans up the back so if water flies we don't have to worry about getting into the uh the air uh, the pod filters so to keep that nice and dry the battery box will be in there so we'll gonna just just wanted to show you guys the next step is now taking it apart painting the frame clean it up and then we'll start the wiring if I have to adjust my mounting to make it easier to get the seat on and off because I want to make the seat I want to make that pretty accessible so if I have to lengthen the bolts that are on it I'll do that I bought some couplers to screw on to I'll share with you what I did I bought some couplers to screw on to the bottom these are just uh, going to be adjusters so that when I put this on in the back, let's see if you guys can see it. Let me, let me get you guys in a spot so you can see. So when I put this on, this is going to function like a, um, let me get you down just a little bit. So I'm just square you up. Okay. So when you look at the back, those two, these, these two are going to just, are going to be what we bolt into from underneath. And these two are just going to be stoppers that sit right here. Just, uh, just to keep the, once the seat's on and I'm through, to keep the seat from going over the back of it. I want it to be nice and tight and sit there so that when you sit on it, it doesn't go down and squash down on top. I want it to sit right up and be nice and tight right there. So that little stopper is gonna help with that. Once that's bolted down, it sits really nice. There we go. That's it. And I, I like it because it sucks it down just a little bit to where it's not just, it's not just flat straight across. It does suck it in a little bit more. And I can, I, it's just finger tight. If I tighten it up a little bit more, it'll suck it down a little bit more right in here, which is awesome. So it'll give it more of a, more of a slope to it. So it won't look just like a flat seat. It looks, make it look a little more uh, purposeful, right? A little more, I didn't just slap it on. It looks like it could have, could have came that way. So I think it's starting to come together when you look at it. It's, I like the uh, little tail of the little fender on the back. And we'll have the strip of lights, the LED lights will be right here. We'll have those for the tail light, stop light, and turn signals. And it's got just a nice short little, what is it, maybe five, six inch fender. But I think it fits. It fits the, the bike a little bit. So if we had a front one, it'd be even better. But uh, yeah, so this is cool, just like this. Great, we'll get back to you guys in just a few minutes. Okay guys, here we are back with the Honda CB360. You can see we finished painting up the, uh, what are the things called? So we finished painting the frame after we added the hoop, added the little tab for my, uh, to hold the fender, the brace across the one to both hold the seat and the fender. So the fender is nice and solid it's I you can carry the bike with it now what I have to do is I've got to go ahead and get the 
the battery box the battery box and I've got to extend the battery box I'll show you real quick what my challenge is let me see if I can set this guy up right here stick the battery in it so you guys can see what I have going on so a couple of things that that's happening let me get a better handle on this so I can show you so the the battery sticks up as you can see right here, sticks up about an inch above the battery box. About, about a half inch above this. I need, you, you can see it right there. See the gap? That's my, that's my problem because the, the aftermarket seat right here hits the top of the battery so it won't go on. So I need this to drop down about an inch. So I need to extend the battery box. I'm gonna pull off all this stuff off the bottom. I'm gonna extend the battery box and then put it back in. We'll remount. This is the rectifier and then I think the regulator hooks on there too. So we'll just find, we'll pull these tabs off and we'll put them somewhere else on the, the battery box itself once we get it extended. And the way we're gonna do it is we're just gonna cut the bottom off of here. We're gonna cut the bottom off right at the bend, right where it bends. As you can see, right in here, we're just going to cut it off right there, straight across, and I'm going to add another full piece, another full bottom that goes up. We'll connect on both on all four sides, so I'll be able to weld in all the way through. So it'll make it nice and strong, but I'll be able to extend the battery box to drop the battery down just enough to give me the clearance I need for the seat. So let me get you set up, and we'll start cutting away. Okay, guys, so here we are. We finished all the fab work and I did a whole lot of other stuff as we'll walk through and we'll show you. Uh, finished the fab work all in the back. We've got the wiring done. We got the wiring. I think it's, it's pretty neat and tidy. Everything runs into the factory harness here all right in there. You only have this ground wire and then this wire which uh, goes to my the tail light back here, the little LED tail light. And then the only other wire we have back here is this one, which feeds to the LED license plate uh, light that you see. We created a neat, we just fabbed up this little mount from stuff we had laying around. And it works out pretty good and the wire hides pretty nice. It's up under here and it comes up all the way through here. We've got the, we had to extend the battery box down so we could clear the, so our seat could use could slide in underneath there. So we wanted to make sure we did that so it sat in nice. I still have to uh, cut the fuel line and put the, uh, put the tank on. But you can see our wiring here is all nice and tidy up here. Everything's nice and clean. We've got these big beefy tires. Let me get you on this side to make it easier. Big, I think we got three and a half 18s in the front and 410 18s in the back just a little heavier a little heavier tire and you'll be able to see it once we get uh, once we put the tank on and the seat on I think it'll look a little bit better so you can see that again just like on the other side we use the the mount here for the the fuse box on the other side this side we have the voltage regulator the rectifier is bolted in right there to the toolbox our wires run nice and neat coming straight up here. We even have a little dongle, so you, a charging port, so you can do that. Fits in nice right there. So it works out pretty good. That's good, let's see what happens. Oh, one little thing I like to do, one little thing I like to do is put a little dot, red dot, where my fuel, where my start and stop is, just to make life a little easier, just because sometimes I can't remember. You know, when you got multiple motorcycles and you can't remember which one's which, it's like, oh, I need that, so that helps. So let's see if, gas comes pouring out in places where it shouldn't. Looks like it's doing what it should. I'm going to shut it off. 
for now I am gonna run a little bit of this I don't know if this is gonna fit on this little guy here if it does yeah I'll run some some line there too just to make sure so let me go ahead and click that in that way if I do overflow that it, it runs down the overflow tube and not all over first paint okay so let's get into talking about the seat the seat so let me get this hardware out and I'll show you what I have for hardware minus that one so this is the the seats that you see on on eBay pretty much everywhere you see them and they're reasonably expensive they come in a whole host of colors and they come pretty stock they come with a a, a bracket they come with a bracket like this and then two that mount in the back that come up that make an L coming up and the problem is is that sometimes they don't always fit right and and I wanted to, I wanted to make it sit as close and as tight to the tank as possible so we had to modify the bracket a bit had to open it up a little bit more so it would fit in there so now it slides right in underneath where the factory seat would go right goes underneath and it sits really good nice and tight on the back what i did these were the the factory mounts here for uh, the l brackets that come in i added a little uh, coupler so I could do that and welded it to these so I could have longer studs. These are my stops to make sure that I, it doesn't come down and go over the light. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Is that once I put it in, so the seat goes in the gap. And I wanted to make this as serviceable as possible so you could actually use it. And it goes down, but it stops. See, it won't go below. It won't go over it. it won't go over it so and then what i did so i've got those studs that hang out underneath and you can see them when i get it in let's see yeah you can see them i think you can see them up there yeah you can see them poking through so i wanted like i said i wanted to make it serviceable i wanted to be able to get the the seat on and off without tools without having to do it so now these are this is the hardware that i'm using i've got a a wing nut that's going to hold it on, a washer for the bottom, and then I cut this spring. There it is. I cut this spring so it gives me some tension to hold the the um, wing nut on so I don't have to worry about it it coming apart or anything like that vibrating loose. So let me get you guys set up and then I'm going to go ahead and put this thing on so you can see it. Okay guys, so there you have it back together I don't know if you remember what it used to look like it used to look like this and now it looks like this from a pile of parts just a pile of parts and now we have I think pretty nice looking motorcycle I'm I don't know you guys in the comments below let me know how do you feel i really like this little fender i really like the little fender on the back it's uh it's nice it's functional it works it's clean cleaned it up really good and everything's still pretty pretty factory yeah looks pretty good let's go ahead and see if it'll start We haven't started it all together and tuned it, anything like that. So let's see what it looks like, see what it does. Let's see, let's turn the key on, hit the button, fuel on. Let's give it a little bit of.
not bad. Oh, it's... Okay, here we go. Let's take this guy for a ride. All together. It's pretty good. Let's get on this sucker. Let me hide this guy. That's my charging dongle. I don't know what you call it. So. Fuel on. On. Sounds pretty good. in right here take a nice little photograph okay here we go got our pictures for the 
Ram. Not bad. Got to bleed that front brake a little bit. guys thanks for watching this is a kind of different uh video than what we normally do but as always i thank you guys for watching do us a favor like tag share and follow us on instagram at motorcycle rewind and go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below thanks again guys and have a great day